It is 8.33 now. Time for Keller at Large. Here's John Keller. Well, there's a new DA on the beat, if you will, here in Suffolk County since January of this year. And we're pleased to have her joining us this morning here on WBZ. Rachel Rollins is a native of Cambridge, a graduate of UMass Amherst and Northeastern Law School, and was elected in uh, last fall. Welcome. Thank Good you to so have much, you here. John. I was going to say, in a bit of a surprise, were you surprised on Election Day? I was surprised by how much we won by, but yeah. I would not have put my hat in the ring if I didn't think we would be successful. I was fortunate to just have an amazing team around me that, that helped us secure a really strong primary victory and a crowded field and then an, an amazing, strong mandate victory in the general. Was that primary won on the street door to door or not? I think so. I definitely think uh, we... I would say we outworked the competition. We we just, I'm the only candidate that attended every single forum. I answered all the questionnaires myself. Um, but we had some really strong, um, strong opponents, uh, and I'm proud of the work we did. Well, uh, your predecessor, Dan Connolly, was never shy about his criticisms of some, far from all, but some local judges. Mm -hmm. He felt they were often far too lenient in their handling of criminal cases, uh, both in terms of uh, uh, brooming some cases and also in when it came to sentencing. Do you feel the same way? Do you think judges are sometimes too lenient when you bring a case? Um I have a deep respect for judges. I was fortunate enough to be appointed to the Judicial Nominating Commission by Governor uh, Deval Patrick. And these judges that are making these decisions are seasoned lawyers. They have often been prosecutors or criminal defense attorneys. Um, so Dan and I, uh, and I have a deep respect for Dan Conley. He left me with an amazingly high-functioning office uh, in great fiscal condition, but also with amazing staff. Um, we disagree a little bit in the sense that I believe judges should have the discretion at the end to make determinations about the sentences people should have. So that's where a minimum mandatory comes in. What the police charge or we uh, charge somebody with in the beginning, if, it, if a minimum mandatory is attached to that, the judge has no discretion at the end to say, you know what, I want to look at these mitigating factors. I don't think you deserve 18 months. I think you deserve more or less. They lose all their discretion at the end. So Dan and I disagree a little bit about that. Well, I remember one case where he went ballistic was, this goes back a few years, you probably remember this, uh, the Globe uh, Spotlight team had written about a local judge who was notorious for turning loose DUI cases, drunk mm -hmm. driving cases. Mm -hmm. what, you know, and, and in some cases, egregious yeah. rulings. What about that kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, what I think is great about where we are politically now is we would be asking on the record for uh, the most serious uh, sentence depending on where we were if there was going to be a plea or whether we had gotten a guilty verdict um, and we would then I think sit down with whoever the chief judge if that was happening in district court whoever the chief is for all the district courts and say we are having a disconnect here H help us understand what we need to do differently um, and and I think we're not going to take it to the media but I do believe we will be speaking to our counterparts in justice, whether it's the Chief Justice uh, or other uh, stakeholders, to say we disagree with what's happening. Tell us why you are um, not supportive of what we're proposing. Help us understand what your frustration is with us. That's the type of discussions we're going to be having now. Well, obviously, that's an important relationship for a DA. Uh, also extremely important is the relationship between the DA and the local police. Sure. Uh, how's it going with you and Commissioner Gross so far? It's going well. I promise you it is. And, um, and in fact, it is going well with the president of the Boston Police Patrolmen's Association, President Leary. Um, we are going to have a, uh, a relationship where when I am going to do something, <laughs> I'm going to let them know before it happens. It's not an asking for permission, but we operate together in this system. Um, I gave them each a copy of the memo that I issued the day that I gave it to my staff. We had had discussions about the memo, so we have to operate together. I think the relationship is going well. We have to take a break. I want to follow up on that a little bit as we continue our conversation with the District Attorney of Suffolk County, Rachel Rollins.